set, merge, split out. These are three fundamental nodes in N8N. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how they work with examples. Welcome back to Tommy Codes. Let's get into the video. So I've got some sample data here. I've got this customer's Google Sheet and I have Sheet 1 and Sheet 2. In customers one, we've got names and emails. We got 15 of these pairs. And you notice that the header is just name and then email over here. In customers two, I've got very similar data. The actual names and emails are slightly different and the headers are different. So now we have customer name and customer email. And again, compare that to name and email. And what I wanna do is build out an NAM workflow that's gonna send an email to everybody on this list just saying hello. So that would be 30 emails in total. Let's jump into NAM. And I've already got a basic skeleton. I have a test trigger here, and this is gonna split out immediately into two different parts. First, we're gonna read from sheet one. So we see here that this is Diana, Alice, Charlie. So I think that's gonna be Diana, Alice, Charlie. And then down here in the other branch, we have Alice, Bob, Charlie. So that's gonna be customers two. Now sending an email here, if it was just one sheet would be very straightforward. Basically what we would do is go into here and we would add the Gmail node here. And we would go ahead and send the email. And that actually would work. We could add a Gmail node here. We could add a Gmail node down here and we could send off the emails and that would technically work. But the issue is we're kind of duplicating this Gmail step and the logic is gonna be more or less the same. So it would actually be cleaner if we could combine all of this data into just 30 items. So we see here it's 15 items and 15 items. Really what I want is to have just one node that's outputting 30 items. And maybe you could have guessed where this is going, but we're gonna to wanna to use the merge node to do this. So let's go ahead and add a node, it's called merge. And as the name suggests, this is when we wanna combine two streams of input. And that's actually why we've got multiple inputs here. So if we go ahead and combine uh, the data here, we can run this. So let's open this guy up and we're gonna do append. You're gonna have to specify the number of inputs. If you had more inputs, you could increase this to four. And you'll notice that that's going to affect the number of wires that need to go into this node. We're only gonna do two in this case, so let's change this to two. You'll notice that there's a few different ways to combine data. In our case, we wanna use append. That means that if we have 20 items in the first branch and 30 items in the second branch, our final output is gonna contain 50 items. So let's go ahead and run this. We're just gonna do append. Note that you can actually modify this. You can do SQL, you can combine different items. So if you have different logic for combining data, this would also work. You can even choose a branch if you only want data from one of the, one of the nodes. In our case, we are just going to append. So let's hit append and we're gonna execute the step. And if we go down here, everything did work. So we can see that now we do have 30 items coming out of here. And if we open into this, we're gonna see that, let's see, we've got row number 12, 13, 14, 15. But I want us to pay attention to what's going on right here. And notice that the last row from the first spreadsheet has name and email, and that's Evan at demo. So if we go back in here, that's that would be Evan at demo. And then it picks up with the first row from the second input, which is customers two. Now notice that that's Alice, Alice at sample. So we have Alice, Alice at sample, but we do kind of have an issue now. And that's because in the first set of data, we had name and email. And in the second set of data, we had customer name and customer email. And this is gonna cause some problems because if we actually go into Gmail here, and if we go to send a message, and the issue is here that if we look at the inputs, we actually have multiple fields we have name email and customer name and customer email and that's going to cause us some issues because we actually just need one of those so if we look at the table again things look weird we've got name and email for the first set of inputs and then we have these undefined so basically we were able to merge the data but the issue is the shapes of the data were actually different and that's where the set node is going to come in because really what i want is to just have row number name and email I don't have to deal with these undefines. I want everything to just go under one umbrella. I don't wanna have different names for the fields. Luckily, that's where set is gonna come in. So before we go into merge, what we are going to do is call into edit field set. And now we're just gonna decide what we want the final naming convention to be. And I'm just gonna select customer name and then customer email. And so set or edit fields as it's sometimes called, I guess it's actually just called edit fields parentheses set. This is to rename and remap different fields. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna add customer name and customer email, and this is gonna make sense in a second. But we're gonna pull in name and we're gonna pull in email. And if we execute this step, you'll notice that we still just have 15 items, but now we're just gonna see that the only fields included are customer name and customer email. So basically what we did, at least in this top branch, is we map name to customer name and we mapped email to customer email. Okay, that looks good. And then what happens if we run the merge from here? We're getting a little closer, but now we'll notice that in this table, we have customer name, customer email, 
customer name, customer email. And then in the 30 output items, you'll notice that we have customer name, customer email. And then down here we have customer space name with capitals. So we're almost there. Now what we're going to do is copy this edit fields. We are going to move it to this Google Sheets and we're going to populate it all through there. But now we're going to change the input mapping. So you'll notice here that json.name doesn't exist. That's because for this input, we actually have customer name. So what we're going to do here, and that's customer name with a space. So let's go ahead and populate that guy. Let's go ahead and populate that guy. So basically, it's the exact same node that we saw above, but the difference is the input mapping is slightly different. So we're going to execute this. And now you'll notice that this looks exactly the same as the output to this one. The only difference being, of course, the data itself. So now that looks good. Let's go ahead and run the merge node. And now finally, what's going to happen when we do this is now all 30 items have the exact same shape. So this is really good because now in our Gmail node, if we open this guy up, we no longer have the four random names there. And if we look at the table, there's no more undefined. We just have these two columns. And basically, everything is as if in our original spreadsheet, we had everything in the same sheet. So that's really the benefit of edit fields and merge. And the reason we needed to use merge here is because we were combining two different streams of data. And the reason that we used edit fields in conjunction with merge here is that the input data into the different branches was slightly different. And we needed to kind of massage it into a data model that was normalized or rather the same across all branches. So oftentimes, if you're going to think about using the merge node, you may need to use the edit fields node as well, because you want all of your data to look exactly the same. That's going to make it a lot easier going forward. All right, so now we're going to talk about split out. If we take a look at the spreadsheet here, I've got a new list of sample data and it contains batches and then items within those batches. And so we can see here that we have contraption, widget, gadget, blah, blah, blah. Now, what if I wanted to, for each of these batches, loop through each of the items associated with the batch? So basically, I want to go batch one. Go to contraption, go to widget, go to gadget, go to doodad, go to thingamajig, then hit batch two, widget, contraption, gadget. You can see we're kind of unrolling a list here. That's what this is called. This is where split out is going to come in handy. Now, no, we're going to have to do something a little fancy here. We are going to have to reintroduce the set node. And that's because the items, when we pull it in from Google Sheets, this is actually going to be interpreted as a string. And we need this to be interpreted as a list for this to actually work. So let's go ahead, go into here. So you'll notice I've already wired this up with Google Sheets down here. And we can see that this is just pulling in the data. Now, what we're actually going to do is edit fields. And we're going to do this items JSON. And the reason we need to do this is because this is a string and we need to convert it to an array. So we're going to pull in items here. And we are going to add, excuse me, we're going to pull in items here. And then we are going to add a JSON.parse because JSON.parse will convert this into an actual array. And now we execute that step. And now you'll notice that in our table, we've actually split this up into a real array object. So now that that's a real array object, we're going to call split out here. And now we are going to pull in items JSON as the field to split out. And that's basically going to unroll our list for us. Now let's execute this step. And now you'll notice we have 36 items. So what it did is it went through all of our inputs. So for each of those 10 inputs, it unrolled each of the lists. And now we have 36 items. And now what we can do here is basically, I don't know, like send a message, we can do Slack, we can do whatever you want with each of these items, we can add them to a new list, maybe we do that. So yeah, let's go ahead and uh, like add them to a new sheet. So we'll just call it item here. And then let's go into this guy, we're going to modify you pull it in here. And we're going to make this a right. So we're going to append a row. And we're going to change this to sheet three Did I just call it sheet three. All right, it's, it's taking a second to load here. Hopefully it doesn't take too long to you. We're going to grab sheet three and yeah, it's fetching the columns. And now basically what we can do here is add items JSON out here and we can execute the step. That's going to look good and wait for it. Wait for it. What happened? Too many requests. Okay. Well, the live demo didn't work for you guys, but you get the idea. This is basically what you'd want to do in order to unroll list. You would use the split out function. Another thing to note is notice that because in the split out node, I said items JSON is the field to split out. Well, it's kind of weird because that ends in an S like items plural. If you, there's an option here to uh, destination field name, this is where you can take the input field, which is kind of for a list. It's plural. I can just change this to singular item. And if I execute this step, you'll notice that now further down the pipeline, if I go over here, we're going to have to modify this. There's no more items JSON. It would be singular item. So keep that in mind. You can rename this stuff. And honestly, usually the field name for a list is going to be different than the field name for an individual item. Anyway, quick tutorial today. Just wanted to go over these fundamental nodes in NADN. Let me know in the comments if you thought this was helpful and we'll see you on the next one. Thank you.